This video documents the widespread occurrence of the wireless industry exposing unknowing persons to unlawful levels of RF radiation. Congress has mandated that the FCC enforce limits to protect human safety, but this video documents the FCC's lax, almost non-existent enforcement of their responsibilities. The FCC's lax enforcement has allowed the largest of companies, the fattest of cats, and the heedless of the corporate world to continue to ignore the federal RF exposure safety limits that are intended to protect all Americans. The wireless companies are required by the Telecommunications Act of 1996 to ensure that the public is not exposed to radiation greater than the limits set by the federal government. Using calibrated RF radiation survey equipment, we have discovered hundreds of wireless sites exceeding this federal exposure limit. Our investigative team was small. How many more hundreds or thousands of these sites exist? Another shocking thing that we discovered is that the wireless companies are incapable of providing any safety guidance for persons requesting it. We have also documented the FCC's methods to cover up complaints and misinform the public, even though they're responsible for enforcing the laws that are supposed to protect the public. What's all the fuss about? You might be asking yourself, what are the health risks from RF radiation? Well, the FCC set the lawful RF radiation exposure limits to prevent thermal or heating effects from occurring in human beings with absolutely no consideration for non-thermal biological effects. Let's discuss these limits in detail. The FCC limit is a two-tier limit. One limit is for the occupational exposure. The other limit is for the general population and is five times lower than the occupational exposure limit. Why the FCC allows one group to be exposed to five times more radiation than another group is a mystery to us. Exactly how would you know which limit applies to whom? Well, the guidance provided by the FCC seems to offer some clarification. According to this FCC guide and other FCC documentation, it seems pretty clear that occupational exposure is only for persons working in RF exposure areas that have been specifically trained and capable of controlling their exposure to RF radiation. All other persons without this knowledge or training fall into the public exposure category. So non-RF trained persons working on rooftops like building engineers, roofers, and HVAC technicians are all classified as general population uncontrolled persons. In Lyon, France, May 31st, 2011, the World Health Organization's International Agency for the Research on Cancer classified radiofrequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans. The international scientific community has produced research that suggests that RF radiation has non-thermal biological effects on the body. Many of these non-thermal effects are neurological, and some studies claim that RF radiation may even cause cancer. These non-thermal effects occur below the lawful FCC limits. You might be asking yourself, has anybody been injured? A man named John Orchard was exposed to radiofrequency radiation in an accident while he worked for AT&T Alaska on November 16, 1998, while servicing microwave satellite communications equipment. The level that John was exposed to was below the thermal limits, or nearly 110% of the FCC occupational limit. John Orchard applied for workers' compensation benefits on September 21, 1999, claiming he had suffered head, brain, and upper body injuries as a result of his overexposure to radiofrequency radiation. The Alaska Supreme Court upheld the award to John Orchard for his RF radiation injury below thermal exposure level on July 6, 2007. Nobody knows how many more John Orchard injuries exist. Exactly what is supposed to happen to wireless carriers if they break the law? Well, the FCC Enforcement Bureau is responsible for ensuring that people are not subjected to RF radiation that exceeds the lawful limits. When the FCC determines that a license holder is violating the law, they issue an NOV or Notice of Violation, 
and if uncorrected can place a monetary fine, known as a Notice of Apparent Liability, or NAL, on the license holder for violating the law. NALs have only been issued in less than a few dozen instances to FCC license holders operating commercial broadcast facilities like TV, FM, and AM radio stations. The typical fine for violating the law is $10,000 per occurrence, with willful and repeat violators paying additional penalties. With all of the hundreds of thousands of wireless sites nationwide, only one cellular or PCS license holder has ever had an NOV issued for exceeding the lawful exposure limit for RF radiation in the United States. This is a very impressive record for an industry with so many licensed transmitters. Or is it? We started our investigation by visiting the only PCS site to ever receive a notice of violation. Two wireless carriers have placed antennas on the roof of an apartment in Queens Village, New York. The notice of violation stated that Metro PCS had an antenna that exceeded the general population limit by 60% or 160% of the limit. The NOV further stated that there was no evidence Metro PCS insured persons working on the rooftop were aware of their potential for exposure and the general population limit applies. Metro PCS claimed the site was brought into compliance and it appears the FCC trusted Metro PCS to comply with the law. The FCC threatened that an EA or environmental assessment may be requested and possibly further sanctions if Metro PCS were found to still exceed the MPE limits. This meter is a calibrated NARDA RF radiation survey meter. It is the same manufacturer and type that the FCC uses to enforce the exposure laws. This probe is designed to be able to measure up to 600% of the FCC general population limit, which is the same as 120% of the FCC occupational limit. That is 10% above the limit that John Orchard was exposed to. The meter displays the percentage of the MPE measured at the site. For exposure readings above the probe's 600% limit, this meter will display O-L for overload. All of the measurements that you will see were made using the spatial average measurement technique. While we were investigating the site, we found five antennas that we could easily stand in front of. Four of them belonged to AT&T and one belonged to Metro PCS. We measured 284% of the general population limit in front of Metro's antenna and 514% of the general population limit in front of AT&T's antennas. Not only did Metro PCS not correct their non-compliant site, our measurements also determined that AT&T emissions exceed 500% of the FCC public limit or 100% of the occupational limit. We only found two signs near the antennas. They both belong to AT&T. We found a sign and a phone number near Metro PCS's equipment cabinet. We called the number to see what kind of safety guidance a worker repairing this rooftop would receive. Metro not this is Leah. I'm just trying to fix this leak real quick on this roof and I, I just need to know, I mean, what I need to do here. Okay, I, what is the situation? Where are the antennas located and where are you going to be working? No, we're, we're working in front of the antennas. I mean, they're they're like, you know, arm's length from, from the edge of the yeah, road. Yeah, but are they facing towards where you are or yeah. the other way? No, they're facing towards where I am. They usually are not faced to the inside of the building. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. If you're on top of the building, they usually faced outwards. So, uh, you know, that's why I just want to make sure. I mean, they are facing outwards. They're just... So then you should be fine. Okay, they're, they're about an arm's length from the edge of the roof, so I have to yeah, kind of get in yeah. front of them, so... Yeah, you're you not in front of them, you're okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. So... Alrighty. Okay. Thanks. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality purposes. Hey, TNT, what building is Bob? Hi, right, Bob. Just wondering if it's uh if it's safe for me to be in front of the antennas working there. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> no. No, that's not a good idea. Okay. A lot of more energies uh, present in those 
antenna, especially you know that close to them, out away from them a little bit, yeah, you're okay. But if you're on a roof that close to it and you can see the sign, that's not a good thing. What kind of building is this? High rise building? So, yeah, it's a, like a three story. Yeah, we'll put an antenna where we can find. <laughs> They really frown on us shutting these in, shutting the whole site down. I want to have to call a field engineer. Okay. On, on this, um, it's not very busy right now. I only see a couple calls up on it. Hey, John. Yeah. I uh, called the field engineer for the site. His name's Jeff. Okay. I gave him your number. He's going to be calling you shortly. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. As long as you're behind the antenna, there's no problem. It's when you're right directly in front of them. Okay. Well, we need to work right in front of them. I mean, there, we got to do the the whole area of the roof there. Okay. Um. So you have no idea what switch this is on, or anything like that, right? You're just I, uh, yeah, yeah. I have no idea anything off. about any of that. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, take a look. I don't know where this site is. What switch? I got to do a little homework here and lock it down so I can get back. Okay. I'll get back in ten, ten minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. Hey John, it's Jeff ATT. I just got to phone my boss. You're supposed to call this number and give him this site number. Okay, the number you're supposed to call is one eight six six. National Field Service San Francisco. How can I help you? Hi there. Uh, my name is John. Just talked to someone from here, one of the representatives, about. Um, I'm trying to fix a leak on this roof over here in Queens Village and they sent me to a tech and now the tech told me to call back and give you guys, uh, I guess this, I don't know what this number is he gave me to give you guys. This is the National Field Service um, desk. Um, who, do, you, do you remember who you actually were on the phone with? I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he was uh, a, he was a tech. Basically, basically, all I need to do is I, I'm just trying to retard this roof, and I saw the sign, and it's it had the number on it, said to call if you got to work here. I, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. I'm burning daylight here. I'm trying to get this done. You know, I, it's not going to take me long. I don't okay, have to. Hey John, what's your call back? Oh, it's uh, it's a two zero one. Uh huh. Uh huh. They're fine. They're trying to tar the roof, and you're with. Correct. And what I'm going to do is, I'll give you a call back with the ticket number, just in case anybody asks, so that you did call a log into the site, since you are doing non-service affecting work, so I'll call you back with a number, okay? Okay. You can get your roof down, all right? Okay, great, thank you. All right, thanks, bye. Bye. So we've pretty well established that AT&T and Metro PCS do not and cannot provide RF radiation safety guidance at this site. The FCC Notice a violation clearly warned Metro PCS to correct their problems or face further sanctions. Being good citizens, we decided to inform the FCC that this site is still not compliant with federal RF radiation limits, as defined and described in their own notice of violation. Exactly how do you complain about a site that exceeds the federal RF radiation limits? Please accept our apologies for the old cliché. But this is where the plot thickens. We invite you to watch Wireless Industry Safety Failure